It is a clay made from paper pulp and pumice and binders. And it comes in a package like this. It's ready to use. It's imported from Japan and repackaged for the United States. And it's an air dried clay and it, it um, doesn't require firing. It's really lightweight, and so when it's dry, it resembles the strength and durability of balsa wood, which is very lightweight, not very strong, but what's unique about it compared to other clays is it always has a certain amount of flex to it. When I discovered it, a friend of mine was making figurines. It's used as for doll making. I just wondered if it would stick to other things or if it could be worked flat like what you see I'm doing. And I experimented and lo and behold, I could, I could do just about anything I wanted with it because it will adhere to anything. Wood, plastic, um, metal. So like this is and the flex is kind of gone from it. Every time I paint it with something, it kind of, it reconstitutes it just ever so slightly, so it has some more flex to it. But, so the, this piece and this piece that I'm working on are going to be, you know, they're freestanding. And I put a paper backing on them with a little loop, so now it's become an ornament. But I could also glue this onto other surfaces if I wanted to, like if I was trying to put it into something like that, or you could glue it in there, or suspend it on some blocks. Yeah, so I kind of used my skills as a graphic designer in designing on um, tracing paper, and then uh, I put that on the clay, and then I draw around it, so I've left my impression in the clay. So now I can go back and follow those impressions and I just kind of make, I rough it in with some deliberately deep marks. Paper clay was primarily used in doll making and figurines. So when I started applying it to boards and uh, sculpting it in bas relief, I kind of opened a door for myself and for the company because no one had been working with it in that way. It was actually something that my daughter did. She, uh, like for example, she had done, she was in a workshop and she had done a painting. Uh, and she had painted her piece and she didn't like how she painted it. And so I took rubbing alcohol because it's a solvent for the paint and I removed all the paint. And when I and I had never done that before, and it left you know paint in all the crevices, which you know is more kind of like this. This has been had paint applied and then removed from the surface, and it just opened another door in this uh, process where I could all of a sudden now just uh, like I can protect the paint protect the surface of the clay with medium, paint on it, remove the paint and get it into the crevices, leaving me this nice, um, you know, a nice piece that has paint in the crevices, which um, up until this point, I used to paint it, the thing, I used to paint it all black, like this, this was painted all black, and, and then I would paint the surface with opaque paint. Well now, because of what my daughter helped me discover, I paint with transparent paints and the luminousness of the paint. Um, it's a different look than, than this heavy, you know, painted over surface. This is more like a watercolor finish with the depth of the opaque uh, paint in the crevices. The nice thing about this paint, or about, sorry, this clay, is that if you don't like what you did, 
you can change it. I can add clay to the surface of an already dried piece. Like this wing on this bird. I have a bad habit of just making things instead of actually slowing down and, and studying. That was incorrect. So I plan to remove this. I'm gonna just shave off a little bit with my with my exacto. I'm just gonna kind of trim this down. I can sand this in addition to um, to cutting it. Just remove a little bit. I'm gonna put another piece of clay over it. take a piece of clay and just put a new upper wing on him. Just put a little water on there. I'll just do it this way. Change that. Since it's his wing, it can rise up a little bit right there. So, I'll do that and then I can smooth it in a little bit more. Take that edge on there. I'm never worried about like making a mistake with this because I can always just cut it off of there, remove it, uh, reshape it, put new clay over it. I've had things where I've completely like taken the entire bird off of there. Really, I could. I could actually slip a razor underneath there and remove that bird if I wanted to. Make a whole new bird, put it in its place. I have had pieces come back from galleries that were damaged and repairing them is fairly simple. You don't have to sand off the paint and then add more clay and fix it. But for people that don't really know what they want to do in the in art making, this is a really good avenue because you can you learn so much. Sculpting is um, informs drawing, and drawing informs sculpting. So, the more of both you do, the more you learn. And until I work on it again, I can just cover it with a piece of plastic. And that will keep it workable for two or three days. Talking about how to get the black into those recesses. It's something that's the first thing I do after I paint it with a medium to protect it. If I don't paint a medium on there, the clay would just absorb the paint in a very dull looking way. And I wouldn't be able to finesse it in any way. It would just suck it up. And then I take a very slightly damp rag and I'm just gonna wipe away the surface. So that's how we get the black in there. And you just let that dry. You need to let it dry for at least 20 minutes or hit it with some heat. That will cure the paint so it won't come up while you're working with it. And you, you know, like when you start painting, and if I start painting that too soon, even though it looks dry, um, I will end up lifting that paint up. So now I'm gonna use that's how I always begin painting everything, is using transparent paints. These are transparent acrylics, and they're all very pure colors. So it's the purest of the yellows, the purest of the magenta, or it's called conacridone rose. It's the color I like to use rather than just straight magenta. 